Hello everyone, it's Cassie. Welcome back to the Missing Stamps YouTube channel. Today we're going to be playing with this awesome stencil. It's the zebra portrait and it has three stencils to it. And then we're playing with the zebra stripes. And then I am gonna bring in a sentiment from our jungle friends. Let's jump right into it. I have my tonic mat ready to go. And I am going to take these stencils. There's actually two stencils and a mask. Uh, in the zebra portrait and I am going to take these and use some pixie spray on them outside making sure that I have um, plenty of ventilation and the reason for that is there are a couple areas on there that are a little bit thin and if you're going to do any blending um, you're definitely going to want to do some sort of pixie spray or something like that so that those areas don't move. If you just did like a spray through there, you probably wouldn't have any issue, but I wanted to do some ink blending. So I brought in some pumice stone distress oxide along with a blender brush, and I'm going to blend that all over this first stencil. Um, that's going to be our little shadow area. And you'll notice I even took one of my magnets and put it right in the center piece of that one just so it wouldn't move. I'll peel away my stencil and then I'm going to bring in the second part of our stencil and it's really pretty easy to line up. Both of these stencils have an embossed edge around them so that you can do this over the size of an A2 front. My A2 front is, well all A2 fronts are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Um, so I'm just lining that up over the top and I'm using this on watercolor paper because I was planning to do some spraying. But before we do that I'll bring in some black soot distress ink and another blender brush. I find that the black soot, just regular distress ink, is nice and black and it blends beautifully over the top of the distress oxides that I found. So I'll just keep blending and just trying to be a little bit mindful of some of those really thin areas, but you'll notice what I'm talking about. Uh, there, there are some really thin lines and if you go too crazy with your blending brush, you can move those lines and blur it just a little bit. And there was one area that I blurred it a tiny bit, but I end up not it doesn't bother me so I'm just going to kind of keep moving. So let me pull that stencil back. You'll see what I'm talking about. I love that. Isn't that so cool? It gives it this look of like 3D. So now I'm going to bring in the mask which is the third part of this stencil. I'm just going to set that on there. You could use pixie spray but I plan to use pixie spray on our zebra stripes. So I use that on there and I'm going to put that right down on top and that's going to hold the mask in place. And then I'm going to bring in my makeshift splatter box, carefully peeling this up and sticking that inside there. I'm going to bring in some Distress Oxide sprays. I want this to be a little bit, well, sort of organic. So I'm tearing a paper towel and I've got my fired brick and I'm going to spritz that in that upper corner. I'll peel away my paper towel and then I'm going to do it on that other end and that's where I'm going to bring in my prize ribbon distress oxide. I love that blue. It's so pretty. Then we'll peel that away and then for that center we're going to use fossilized amber. And yeah that's going to get on those two areas but that's okay. It'll kind of mix and make some green and some orange. And I am going to bring in that fired brick a little bit more to spray that on top and I'll peel this away. Now you could take what is on this stencil and you could put that onto another piece. I'm just trying to be really careful not to have that stick. And uh, then I can take the mask and peel that away and take a look at that. So it's flat, but it looks like there's more to it. I cleaned off my mask. I am going to put it back down on there because I want to do some splatter. I'm going to bring in a gold paint that I have and just put a little bit of water in there and then splatter that with a tiny paintbrush all over that background. You can't really see a whole lot of it until I pull it up to the camera. But, I don't know, it's just something about that splatter. And then we have some of those edges look a little bit feathered, which is just really, really cool. All right, now we need to make our sentiment. So I've pulled in the Jungle Friends stamp set, and I'm just going to use one of the sentiments from there. I'm going to ink up some sentiment stock, or ink up my sentiment with Juicy Embossing Ink and stamp that down onto some sentiment stock. Cover that with some fine detail white embossing powder, and then heat set that till that is smooth and melted. And then I'll clean up my mess and I can trim down my sentiment just a little bit. I'm going to give it an angled edge. And it's here I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to pop that up since everything else is so flat, which I like. I like that this is an easy mailer for sure. And again, this panel is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So that's the full front of an A2 size card. But I got to looking at the panel and I decided I wanted to trim it down just a little bit. So I'm not going to attach down my sentiment yet. I'm going to 
set that off to the side, pull in my guillotine trimmer, and then because I want to make sure that our zebra is nice and centered, I'm just going to trim off about of an eighth of an inch on both of those long sides. So that'll take off a quarter of an inch. And then when I attach that down to my card front, I'll have a border on one side. So now I can put my sentiment down, just lining that up on the glass mat. I've got my card base ready, which is just some white card stock that I measured at five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and scored at four and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to bring the stencil in because y'all know how I like to kind of bring the outside inside. And so I've brought that stencil in. We're going to put down a paper towel. And then even though this paper isn't watercolor paper, if you just don't go too crazy with spritz, you can do this. And so I'm going to do that on the one edge using those same colors we did earlier, uh, fired brick fossilized amber and prize ribbon and I'll peel everything back and take a look oh my gosh I love that I do have a strip of black cardstock that I'm just going to put down to the front of our card base and then using liquid glue I'll adhere down our panel to our card base and I love how that black strip just kind of doesn't necessarily frame it but it definitely draws the eye and so that's going to finish off our card for today. I hope you loved it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And be sure to check out all that Miss Ink Stamps has going on over on their Facebook page, blog, and Instagram. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you soon.